Okay. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank the organizers for uh, putting together this meeting. It's quite interesting. Uh, it's a different experience than being all together, and uh, it should work. Uh, it's something certainly worth experimenting with. Uh, I, I decided to talk about, uh, since the topic of the conference was uh, networks and symmetry, a result that's a few years old, but uh, uh, which I think is uh, not so well known and, uh, so, and certainly interesting from the point of view of syn uh, symmetry and synchrony. And these are patterns of phase shift synchrony uh, for periodic solutions uh, of differential equations, of systems of differential equations. So for us, a network is a coupled system of differential equations. And we're curious about when periodic solutions can have two nodes that are doing exactly the same thing up to a phase shift, and when that is a kind of structurally stable uh, phenomenon. Uh, so I, I'd like to begin these talks with uh, uh, the simplest example of a two-node system, where the system of differential equations uh, is uh, given here uh, that x1 dot is uh, some function of x1, the internal state variable, for the first node, and it's coupled from uh, the second node, so it's a function of x2, uh, the state variable for the second node. But x2 dot is the same f, uh, uh, but now of x2, x1. And it's the, uh, there is a symmetry that, take, that is symmetry takes solutions uh, to solutions for these uh, systems. And uh, if you have a t-periodic solution, there are two special kinds of solutions, those that are synchronous and those uh, antiphase that are half period out of phase. Uh, to remind you how this comes about, uh, suppose that uh, we call gamma this inter, um, this transposition symmetry, interchanging one and two. Uh, if gamma takes x of t, the trajectory to itself, then gamma x of zero lies on the trajectory, therefore it's x of theta t, where t, capital T is the period of x, and theta is between 0 and 1. Uh, it, because of um, x of t is a solution and gamma of x of t is a solution, we see that gamma x of t must be x of t plus theta t for all time because they have the same initial conditions when time is 0. Uh, suppose that gamma is an order 2 element, so gamma squared is the identity, uh, then uh, we're going to get x of t plus 2 theta t equals x of t. That is, theta must be equal to 0 or a half uh, mod 1. Uh, if it's 0, you get the in-phase solutions. It's a half uh, the anti-phase solutions. And that shows you how symmetry uh, leads to this kind of synchrony, synchrony uh, a phase shift synchrony. Now, moreover, these solutions are rigid. That is, if I uh, change f a little bit, uh, then I'll move the periodic solution, uh, but it'll have the same phase shift synchrony uh, as one half the period or zero uh, phase shift. And such solutions can be obtained by Hoff bifurcation. Uh, something that was uh, looked at 30 years ago or so is the uh, bidirectional ring of, uh, of three cells. Uh, we have this, uh, the kinds of differential equations that go along with this network. And uh, in here, you can get uh, discrete rotating waves. That is, tau is the symmetry that uh, goes uh, uh, 1 to 2 to 3 back to 1. Uh, uh, you can have in-phase solutions where, let's say, nodes 1 and 3 are um, uh, synchronous. Or you can have out-of-phase solutions where 1 and 3 are out-of-phase by half a period. Uh, but then x2 must be out of phase with itself by half a period. That is, x2 will have twice the frequency. Uh, the kinds of solutions are uh, to nonlinear equations to do this are uh, pictured here. You can have uh, the three nodes a third of a period out of phase, or two nodes a half period out of phase, and the third going at twice the frequency. So uh, this, sort of, uh, this kind of relationship between uh, symmetry and synchrony ha has been known for quite a long time. Now, uh, in the early uh, 2000s, uh, uh, in a paper that was published in 2003, uh, Ian Stewart and I and uh, uh, Marcus Pavato uh, tried to put together a general set of uh, setup for networks of differential equations. That is, uh, we have 
uh, a, in this example, there are five nodes, uh, three of circle type and two of square type. And there are, uh, I think, uh, four different kinds of um, uh, connections between these. And uh, if you go through this, you can write out the general vector field that corresponds to this kind of network, uh, as I've done here. Now, I'm not going to go through the details. Uh, it's a little bit cumbersome to do so. Uh, but the point is that to each network of this type, uh, or graph of this type, we can, we can associate a class of ordinary differential equations. And what we want to know is what is structurally stable in that class. Well, the theorem I want to talk about is that if you have a transitive network or a path-connected network, depending on which term you prefer, non-zero rigid phase shift synchrony is possible if and only if the phase shift is formed by a symmetry on a quotient network. And the rest of the talk will be trying to explain uh, what uh, these words mean in the context of this theorem. Uh, it, was, uh, it took about four or five years for this uh, theorem to be put together. Uh, I give Ian Stewart prime credit for uh, come, uh, realizing that this was going to be the case. Uh, so uh, let's look at synchrony subspaces or what people sometimes call you now cluster synchronization. Uh, this is going to be a, uh, a flow invariant polydiagonal. So in this network of seven nodes, mainly three forward, note that the green nodes, as they're colored, are the same function of uh, green and blue. That characterizes the green equations. Uh, the red equations are uh, functions of red and green, and the uh, blue uh, equations are a function of blue and red. That is, uh, if you take all of the green nodes and set them equal, all the red nodes and set set them equal, the blue nodes set them equal, you will get a flow invariant subspace. And this is true for all of the admissible vector fields associated with this, this network. Uh, we call the, a, if you color a network uh, as we have here with the nodes, we call the coloring balanced. If, a, if any two nodes with the same color receive equal numbers of input from cells of a given color, so notice every green receives a blue input, every red receives a green input, every blue receives a red input. Uh, and then the theorem is that you get a synchrony subspace or clusters given by the colors uh, if and only if this uh, network is balanced. And, and this is a nice theorem because it says in the end you don't have to look at the differential equations. It just comes from combinatorial features of the network that you get these flow invariant subspaces. Now, uh, these spaces also lead to um, uh, what we call a quotient network. Uh, so the, it, what we define as to be a quotient network goes as follows. You have this network on the left, the five-node network, uh, that has uh, no symmetry. It's, it's easy enough to check that. But if I color it black, blue, and red, as in the middle figure, then notice uh, blue in, uh, blue nodes receive a black and a red input, black nodes receive a blue and a red input, and red receives a um, uh, black and a blue input. Uh, that means it's balanced. You have a flow invariant subspace, even though there's no symmetry, uh, and you get a quotient network where the quotient, the nodes in the quotient network are the colors in the original network and the arrows are the projection. So we just get this bidirectional ring of three nodes that we were talking about before. So uh, there's a, there are a couple of theorems that are associated with this, namely every admissible vector field uh, with respect to the uh, left uh, uh, picture restricts to an admissible vector field in the uh, bidirectional ring, and every admissible vector field in the bidirectional ring lifts to an admissible vector field here. So if I know something about the dynamics of the quotient, then I uh, can conclude things about the dynamics of the uh, original network. And, uh, for example, the, uh, I can have a uh, periodic solution where black and blue are half a period out of phase and red is twice the frequency, as in the right. 
and uh, I could have the double frequency in the black uh, with blue and red a half a period out of phase. It's not so obvious that these two trajectories are the same up to a change of initial condition. Uh, but it's a symmetry on the quotient network that's driving it, even though there was no uh, network symmetry to begin with. And to answer a question that Thomas was asking in uh, uh, Abu's talk, uh, you can have many networks that have the same quotient network. And for example, I think there are uh, 14, something like that, different net, uh, four and five node networks that have a quotient network, which is the bidirectional ring. So, uh, and, and they have different dynamics. So that's uh, an interesting feature. Another example is a uh, two rings, uh, a, a unidirectional three node ring and a bidirectional two node ring, all the all coupled together. This system has Z3 cross Z2 symmetry, they're relatively prime, so this is Z6 symmetry. If uh, you take the generator of Z6, which is just the three cycle coupled with the two cycle, uh, then you can ask, are there periodic solutions which have the six cycle with a one six period phase shift? And the answer is yes, there do exist such things. They're rigid. They cannot be obtained by Hoff bifurcation, an interesting point. Uh, but what you'll see when you uh, get uh, such a solution is that the top three nodes are a third of a period out of phase. The two nodes are half a period out of phase on the bottom, but three times the frequency of the um, blue is twice the frequency of the red. So you get a periodic solution. These kinds of polyrhythms come about uh, in, in such networks. Okay, so now to try to explain the um, theorem, let uh, Z of T be a periodic solution with uh, where two nodes, I and J, have this phase shift synchrony. Then theorem, this can come about only if the uh, phase shift is forced by a cyclic permutation on a quotient network. Uh, so, uh, uh, let's try to understand uh, how this generalizes. If you have a symmetry, a permutation symmetry sigma uh, on the quotient network, uh, then the uh, periodic solution that's associated to this will have synchronous things on the uh, nodes that make up the same color in a quotient, and will have uh, the phase shift given by this sigma on the quotient network. And uh, if you write sigma as a disjoint pro a product of disjoint cycles, uh, say that the first one is at order M1, and you relabel re the nodes in the original network so that this is going through M1, then uh, sigma Y of T will imply that Y2 is Y1 of T plus uh, capital T over M, and so on. So you get, a, uh, again, one of these uh, uh, rotating waves uh, on uh, the first M1 cells. If you have, uh, if sigma has two permutations of different lengths, then you will get polyrhythms. That is, the periods on the different things will be, uh, on the different uh, uh, cycles will be different, uh, but they will, the whole thing will put together to make a periodic solution. Uh, to end, I just want to mention, well, can you always get these periodic solutions with these kinds of polyrhythms? And if the internal dynamics is at least two-dimensional or two or more dimensional, then Yosek and Torek prove that you can always get these kinds of solutions, whether they come about by Hoff bifurcation or not. And uh, if the... Um, uh, if the internal dynamics is just single equations, so I call this coupled equations, then any pattern of synchrony you get for coupled equations will be a pattern of synchrony for coupled oscillators with the internal dynamics as S1. And uh, if, the pattern, if you have a pattern of sync, phase shift synchrony for coupled oscillators, they will occur in coupled systems. Neither of these is if and only if. That is, there are examples where uh, you don't get this. And uh, that is the talk. I just want to thank uh, Ian Stewart, Martin Parker, David Romano, and Yunjia Wang. 
uh, for the work on this, uh, proving this theorem over this uh, four-year period. Uh, Natasha Filipsky in her the thesis uh, talked about Hoff bifurcation. Uh, when, you, when periodic solutions in coupled rings cannot occur by Hoff bifurcation, and uh, Leo Matamba Messi and Lucy Sparty uh, about the uh, last thing about when solution, if the internal phase space makes a difference. Thank you.